the message of the Lord to you today is for me to warn you that you are sharing too much of your marriage with the wrong people. You need to take note of this message. Please, this message is not for everyone, but it could be for you. Pay attention to it because it's very, very important. This could be the reason that your marriage is still the way it is now. You have to be mindful of who you talk to. You see, everyone does not need to know about your marriage. I know you may say, hey, but it's my friend. Oh, she's from our family. She's my cousin. She's my distant relation. All these people that you are speaking, you are sharing, talking about your marriage, giving them information, giving them things that they can use against you. Stop talking to people about your marriage because of sympathy. I want them to know what I'm passing through. I want them to feel how it's paining me. I want them. And, and so what? After you have shared all this information, does it take away the pain? Does it make the pain to go away? Does it solve the problem? Why are you sharing your information with people that cannot solve your problem? The Lord wants me to warn you. You are sharing. You are talking too much. You are talking too much about your marriage. You are keeping your marriage in this position. You are keeping your marriage in a position that is causing your pain. That is making your marriage to be in so much desire, so much trouble, so much problem that you don't have peace of mind. Do you know that they are the people causing it? Yes, let me tell you one story. There are two friends in my neighborhood, okay? And both of them are having issues in their marriage. He said, let us come together and team up together and share information together and help each other and advise each other and pray for each other. Yes, these are good things to do, okay? It is good for you to team up and pray and solve your problem. But she didn't know that even the other friend that is also struggling in her marriage was actually jealous of her own marriage. Do you know that there are people like that? They will forget about their own. They will forget that they're supposed to sow good seeds, that they're supposed to mold their husband, that they're supposed to work on their husband, that they're supposed to make their husband to look good, that they're supposed to make their husband to be productive, have money, and especially look good, okay? But she did not do this. Instead, she became jealous of her friends. In her mind, she would say, Look at this one. Your husband is even good looking. Your husband is even nice. Your husband has money and you are here complaining. Okay, come now. Come and get information from me. Come and get advice from me. This was all the things that was going on on her mind, I think. Okay, I'm just guessing. Because the reason I'm talking about this is that the kind of advice that she was giving to the other friend was the kind of advice that was even making the other friend to have more problem with the husband, okay? Her problem was not so severe. It wasn't something that can make them to fight, make them to quarrel, or even make them to separate. That wasn't the case, okay? So when this friend come to the one that was jealous and tell her, you see what my husband has said? You see what my husband is requesting of me? He said, no. Why should you do it? Don't do it though. He doesn't care for you. Don't do it though. His eyes outside. Don't do it though. You will bring down yourself. You will make him to look down on you. And this good one thought that all the advice that this her friend was giving her was for her good. And she didn't know that. The more she's doing this, what this her friend is saying, the more she's having a problem with her marriage. For you to know that these things happen everywhere. So what am I saying? You have to learn to stop yourself. Anyone that is not bearing fruit in you, in the conversation, anyone that is not contributing positively to the solution, okay? 
to how you can solve the problem, to how you can resolve the issue in your marriage so that you can have peace, so that you can be able to worship God with happiness, joy, and peace of mind, okay? So anyone that cannot help you in the course of this, sister, brother, you need to stop yourself. Stop giving this person information. Stop telling this person about your marriage. This is not the way forward. Instead, this will continue to ruin your marriage. This will continue to destroy your marriage. And the most important reason that you need to stop yourself is because you need to understand that some of these people are only pretending. They are pretenders. They will pretend to care. They will come to ask, how are you doing? How is your marriage? I hope you have been able to resolve your marriage. I hope you are you have been able to settle with your in-laws. I hope you guys are not fighting. When you hear them asking all these questions, ask you, ask you, ask you, you don't know that they are trying to get information. They are trying to get things to hold on to. Tools to go and work on so that your marriage can continue to remain in perpetual sorrow. You don't know. Stop giving out information about your marriage. Yes, I understand that you may think that these people actually care, especially when it's coming from family members, especially when it is your sister, your brother, or even your mom, parents. See, I am not saying that they don't care, okay? All I'm saying is that if these people cannot actually help you to find solution, I mean, to solve this problem, to take you out of the misery, if they don't have the right information, stop giving out information that can empower more harm in your marriage. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Please, if you can feel what I'm saying, please drop it in the comment section. Because all I'm saying is that you need to know that the less you talk about your marriage, the better for you. The less you talk about your marriage, the more power, the more energy you will be able to get to actually Focus your thoughts, your mind on the right things you need to do. So all I'm saying is that most of them are only here to gather information so that they can laugh, so that they can mock and say, aha, I thought she claimed that she, she married well. I thought she claimed that she married in the Lord. I thought she claimed that she was a virgin before she married. I thought they will only gather this information so that they mock so that they laugh. And the most important thing you need to take note of why you should not share too much information about your marriage is because they gather this information so that they can use it to spiritually manipulate your marriage. <laughs> they get this information so that they can go and do more. Some of them will go to DBI, they will go to so sorry. They will make sure that your marriage is not getting better. That is why they will come in pretense to care, in pretense to, to see if you are feeling good, in pretense to see if you have actually been able to solve the problem. They want to know the extent at which the Lord is working so that they can go back and start manipulating again. You are sharing too much information about your marriage. What does the Lord say about this kind of people? You need to understand the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 28. The scripture says, perfect person stirred up conflict, gossips, separate good friends. So you need to know that these people's minds are not clean. And as they are also gossiping, spreading the information, this Things that you're saying about your marriage, they are using it from this one location. They will talk to another person, your sister-in-law. From your sister-in-law, you hear from brother-in-law. From brother-in-law, you hear from auntie, cousin. That is how your information is being spread, being spread, being spread. Yes, dear. So you need to understand that these people are going to use this information to 
gossip about your marriage and it's not helping in any way. Stop talking about your marriage to this kind of people, please. I know from the beginning of this video, I have been telling you stop talking, stop talking. Then the question now is, what kind of people should you talk to? Who are the kind of person that you should communicate about your marriage? Who are the kind of people that you should tell about your marital problems? So who should you then share your information with? The marriage problem information should only be shared to trusted people. Trusted people, not only trusted people, please take note. Trusted people who are knowledgeable, who are experienced in the field of marriage, who have been able to marry well, who have been able to sustain their marriage, who have been able to allow God to be at the center of their marriage, who have actually practiced the skill of being in peace in their marriage. The reason that you are choosing this kind of people is that they have vast experience. They will be able to guide you on how they were able to put their own marriage in control, in God's hand. Because if you keep sharing your information to people, especially people who are even unmarried, people who are yet to marry, you keep talking and say, they are my friends, they are my cousins, they are my neighbor. You keep talking to these people. What kind of advice do you think these people will give to you? They cannot give you what they do not have. They cannot give you the experience they do not have. So you need to only talk to people who are knowledgeable, people who were trained on the field, people who are ordained by God. And another way you can know the kind of person you should talk to is person of the same mindset, person that believe the same thing that you believe. Is this person a Christian? Does this person believe in God the way I believe? Because if you guys have the same mindset, you will be able to walk in one direction, in one focus, you will be able to say the same thing, you will be able to do the same thing, and this will help you to move forward faster. This kind of people will be able to tell you, dear, there is power in the Lord. Dear, the power of God can see you through. Dear, there is nothing impossible with God. Dear, God has done it before and I believe he will do it again. And these are the strength that you need. These are the encouragement that you need. They will also give you some advice how to pray. They will also pray with you because they believe the same thing that you believe. They believe that God that is the one that has created marriage is going to amend your marriage. And because you believe this, because you believe this, because the word of God says that whatever you believe will be granted unto you. And because you believe this and you are walking consonant to what you believe, you are having faith in the word of God. You are also having faith in God that God will do this marriage, that God will solve this problem for you, that God will take away all the things that is keeping your marriage in perpetual sorrow because you believe this the lord god will manifest it for you because it's just take faith without faith according to the scripture in the book of hebrew it is impossible to please god so all you need is to have faith all you need is to believe that god can actually solve this problem for you it is not by sharing your information by talking by telling people all the problem that you're passing through how much your spouse has wicked you how much your spouse has maltreated you what he has done what she is doing it's not by doing this that you can actually solve this. All I'm saying is that you should not share your information, your marriage challenges with people whose only work, their only work is to discourage you. You should not keep talking to people who are telling you there is another marriage. Don't struggle. Why are you suffering? Why are you fighting? Why are you trusting God? Why are you praying? Since you have been praying, is there any answer? They keep Killing your faith. They keep pulling you down. Bringing you down. Down and down. 
Because all it takes, as I said before, is your faith. So what I'm saying is that you, I mean, you yourself can actually send the enemy packing from your marriage. Yes, you can actually do this because the Lord God has given you the power. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. God said all. There is no exception. So all include these marriage challenges, except you don't believe. Except you don't trust God. Except you don't believe that you can do it. Okay? The Bible said that you can do it. There is nothing the Lord cannot do. There is no situation that God cannot solve. Except you don't trust God. The Lord wants you to understand that. You should come. Come unto me. Bring your load. Bring this problem to me. Trust in me. And I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you rest. This is what the Lord wants from you. The Lord is doing it. God will also do it. This your marriage will also be a testimony. If there is one, two, three hundred of people that are testifying, my dear brother, my dear sister, you also will also testify that there is God because the God of yesterday is still the God of today and he will remain the God forevermore. He shall remain a God in your marriage in Jesus Christ's name. Check the description of this video. You will see my contacts. If you need a one-on-one -on -one support, please feel free to reach out to me. You are blessed. See you in my next video. Bye.